Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good. This is the day that the Lord has made. Isn't that great? Not just any old day. God made this day. Praise God. And I'm glad I'm in it. I'm glad you're in it. And, uh, and it's exciting. Well, I've been in the Word for most of the day, so I'm pretty charged up and excited about the Word of God. This is tonight is Healing School. This is the last Wednesday of the month of August. And as is our custom, uh, we teach, our ministry teaches on healing on the last Wednesday of every month. If, you, if this is your first time being on here, by the way, if you're a first time visitor or you're an ex a subscriber, hello everybody on behalf of Living Faith Christian Center family. God bless you. I'm so glad you're with me tonight in the word. Hey, Living Faith family, I love you. I love you. You know that. And, um, uh, again, just welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. Uh, to tonight we're going to, I'm going to be sharing a word on cancer doesn't scare God. And I'm going to be talking specifically, uh, about, um, and praying for those of you who are, um, have been challenged with a report, uh, on cancer. Okay. And before I do that, I'm going to share some announcements and open up in prayer. Amen. Uh, this coming Sunday for our Living Faith family or you, if you if you're visiting, if you're going to visit with us this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. at 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey, at Living Faith Living Faith Christian Center at 10 a.m. This is the this will be the first Sunday in September, and we will be partaking together we'll be sharing together in communion the lord's the lord's supper amen uh new members orientation classes are scheduled for september 11th 18th 25th from 10 30 a.m until 12 p.m this is our new members orientation classes if you're uh, one of our newest members or you did not complete the three classes this is your opportunity to get in and and finish the class that you weren't able to um, take uh, the, the last time around. If um, So registration forms will be available in our sanctuary foyer. Also, water baptismal service is scheduled for Sunday, September 11th in the youth, youth hall immediately following service. If you would like to be baptized, please complete the water baptism registration uh, uh, forms located in the sanctuary for, for you or call 856-661-8110. That's September 11th is our scheduled water baptismal. So if you want to uh, be a part of that, you're excited about God and excited about the change in your life being converted, then uh, please uh, be water baptized on that Sunday. The men's ministry will have a men's fellowship on Saturday, September 17th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. I heard that the, our men's fellowship and small groups are going really well, that it's blessing the men. Men, you need your iron sharpening other iron and vice versa. So I'm excited that you're getting involved in these, uh, in these fellowships. Uh, our own Gary Cobb, he'll be the speaker. Gary Cobb, Cobb. If, yeah, I'm sure you know who he is. Uh, he'll be the speaker, and he will facilitate a discussion on how do I make right decisions. How many of you want to make right decisions? Amen. Men, you need to make right decisions, right? Because you're leading. Praise God. And the families are following. All right. Well, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that is powerful. It's powerful. Your word is powerful. You cannot be separated from your word. You, God, and your word are one. And so, Father, we just thank you that your word expresses all that you are, all that you have planned, all that you want to do in our lives. And we just thank you, Father. We thank you that your word is designed to make us whole, spirit, soul, and body. We thank you for tonight's word. Holy Spirit, help me to share this word as I, as I pray with those that are listening. 
Holy Spirit, I know that your power is in it. And so therefore results will follow in Jesus name. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want you to listen quick. I want you to listen right away, right? So just pay attention and I'm just going to jump right into this and then I'm going to pray with you at the end. I'm going to pray with you at the end. Amen. So again, uh, this is Healing School and I want to talk about a topic that is like a big deal in the earth right now. But how many of you know God and his word is even a bigger deal? So I'm going to talk about cancer. I want to talk about cancer, okay? Um, uh, in the United States in 2019, listen to this, 1,752,735 new cancer cases were reported, okay? So that's in 2019. We don't know what it is. In, uh, I don't know what it is in 2022, but that's a lot of cases of cancer. And I don't know about you, I'm tired of hearing about cancer and what cancer's doing and you know and everybody's afraid of it but uh god's not afraid of cancer and neither should you or i be afraid of cancer and that's why why i want to preach about that tonight so um if it may be you maybe you've received an evil report uh and the doctors have told you that you have cancer then this message is especially for you, not just for you, but especially for you. Uh, I want us to go to uh, Matthew chapter uh, 15, Matthew chapter 15, verses 30 and 31, okay? This is one of my uh, go-to scriptures for healing, healing school, uh, Matthew chapter 15, verses 30 and 31. And, uh, I, well, let's start at verse 29. And my Bible, it, it titles these one, two, three scriptures as Jesus heals great multitudes. Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, and went up on a mountain and sat down there. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Now, why do I like reading uh, or using this scripture? It's because people were deaf. People were blind and who could not be cured and had not been cured. There were people who were maimed. That means there was something... Uh, uh, or I'm sorry, the lame. That means um, that there was something wrong with their limbs. They were, they were, uh, um, they were disabled. Um, uh, there were those who were maimed, which means they had actual missing body parts. How many of you know that there is no cure for missing body parts? There is no cure for missing body parts. Now, you can get a, a, a steel foot, a steel leg, a prosthetic, but you can't put a, a real foot, a human foot, back on a person who lost their human foot. You know what I'm saying? And so I like uh, referring to this because all kinds of people, they had all kinds of issues. None of them intimidated Jesus. None of them intimidated God. None of them intimidated the word of God. None of them intimidated the power of God, right? None of them intimidated and caused the word of God not to be manifested in people's bodies. So uh, we need to see this. And so that the, that, that the, the mute, they, they were healed and they spoke. Uh, the maimed, they were made whole. The lame were walking and the blind seeing. And what happened? They glorified the God of Israel. Again, I want you to listen, uh, um, you know, just, just listen with a heart of faith. Amen. Listen uh, to the, with a heart of faith. I want to look at, um, want us to look at Isaiah chapter 53. Of course, this is the healing 
the reference to healing in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. And it says, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, talking about Jesus, prophesying about Jesus. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Why? For us, for us. Um, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did, uh, we did not esteem him. This is the New King James Version. Surely, somebody say surely, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. So people looked at him, and they said, surely this man was an evil man. Surely this man was a criminal. Surely this man had done something to, to justify the way that he was treated, the way that he was uh, crucified, the way that he was beaten in his body and bled with flesh coming off of him. But it says, surely he has borne our griefs. Now, let me see what the Amplified says. Surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Listen. And the chastisement needful to obtain our peace and well-being was upon him. Listen, this, is, this was for us. What Jesus went through, which worked fully and it worked completely. What Jesus went through. God's salvation plan was perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. There were no flaws. There's nothing that the salvation plan of God did not do, did not accomplish, did not heal, did not cure, did not take care of as far as any sin. There's no sin too hard for God to forgive. There's no sickness or disease that's too um, uh, incurable uh, for, for, um, for God, for what Jesus went through. And he did all that for us. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Can somebody say today's truth? Because of Jesus Christ, we have been made whole and healed. Amen. And so we were healed. That's past tense. We were healed. Now, of course, when it was prophesied here, it was it's because the lamb was slain since before the foundation of the world. It was God's plan to rescue us. How many of you know that when you get healed of a sickness or a disease, that is God rescuing you. He's rescuing you from having your the life sucked out of you. He's re rescuing us from having all of our money and our all of our time and our peace of mind being robbed and stripped from us. Amen. And so uh, I want to go back to uh, verse 1 in the Amplified. It says, Who has believed, trusted in, relied upon, and clung to our message of that which was revealed to us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been disclosed? Right? I want to, I want to go to my Bible references, Romans chapter uh, 10 here. Romans chapter 10. And so why am I reading that? I'm reading that. Because, um, because uh, that scripture is talking about, uh, Lord, who will believe your report? So we know that faith, that's why we preach on healing at least once a month, right? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God or hearing the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 16. I want to read that in the Amplified. And it says, uh, But they have not all heeded the gospel, which, which is the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed, had faith in what he has heard from us. And it refers to Isaiah 53, uh, 1. 
So it's comparing now what I'm doing, my comparison uh, today for this message is to compare uh, the report of the Lord, what the preachers, what the gospel preach says as compared to um, the reports that we receive from doctors. Now, God bless doctors, right? They have access, you know, uh, doctors um, uh, mean good for us, right? Um, but, but God's report, it exceeds and it excels and it trumps the report of the doctors. And we need to know that. The report of the Lord that says that by his wounds we are healed, then when we receive a report from the doctor, you know, we talked about this before, but that's what happens. You know, we experience symptoms and things, and we go to the doctor, and the doctor tells us, uh, ma'am, sir, you have such and such. This is what's happening. This, this is what's wrong with you. But we need to know that it is our, um, that we need to believe, we need to get to a place that we always believe the report of the Lord. We believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we believe in everything that Jesus uh, died, um, that he died and suffered for. So I'm talking about, um, Believe in the report of the Lord. Now, we know from um, uh, John chapter 10 and verse 10 um, that Jesus said that Satan comes but for to steal, or, or he only comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said, but I come, I come that you might have life. Why? Because there's an enemy, there's an evil report, there's a sickness, there's a disease that comes at people that is coming to kill them, that's coming to destroy them, right? Uh, and, and, but God wants us to know that Jesus came that we might have life, the God quality of life. And to have it more abundantly, not just regular life, not just easy peasy, but to have the God quality of life operating in our lives and more specifically in our bodies. When we're sick, we need to be healed. Amen. So we, we can see that Satan comes to steal, to kill and to, de to destroy. What I want to say right here is cancer cancer there's a spirit behind cancer we need to know that there's a spirit behind cancer okay now we can have psoriasis we can have uh nearsightedness we can have um what uh you know there are different things that you can actually say that we can live with right but then there's sicknesses and diseases that we can't live with, and that's literal. So cancer is not from God because it doesn't bring life, and it doesn't cause us to live life more abundantly. Isn't that right? To live an exceeding, over and above type of life, right? So, but cancer, cancer, there's another spirit that's behind cancer and it's called the spirit of death. And that's that's what I want to pray for people about tonight. So that's why I said, just listen. Just release your faith. Uh, get your faith ready. Um, faith comes by hearing but, and hearing by the word of God. And so you need to know that Satan, that cancer is from Satan. God, cancer, it has not been given to anyone to teach them a lesson. Uh um, cancer has a spirit of death behind it. Look, I, I wrote down a couple things. This, uh, cancer has a spirit of death behind it. The spirit of death is behind incurable deadly diseases. The spirit of death 
is behind cancer, as I said. The spirit of death is behind a spirit of suicide. So those things, especially, they come to kill you. It's coming to kill you. Cancer wants to kill you. A spirit of suicide wants to kill you or to get you to kill yourself. Okay? So, um, and, in, you know, incurable diseases. Now, um, so, um, so we need to know that there is really a spirit of death behind the spirit of cancer. Again, cancer is everywhere. Now, cancer is, um, I didn't really look up the, the cause or the uh, mechanics of cancer, but I know that cancer is, uh, it, can, it can form tumors, tumors that cluster together and, and uh, cause a mass, which is called a tumor. They're abnormal cells. They're bully cells. They're cells that are designed not to, they, they suck the life out of healthy cells, right? Um, and, uh, and, it, and it's, it comes to take over your whole body, to take over your whole body. Even if cancer is detected in one organ, cancer wants all your organs, right? Cancer doesn't just want to make you sick. It wants to make everything sick. It wants to kill you. Um, and so that's why it's important uh, for us to know that cancer doesn't scare God, right? Um, so... Uh, let's see. So, so God wants to, if you've been, um, given an evil report, you need to know that God wants you healed. He wants you well. Amen. And, um, so, so I'm going to pray with you tonight. So the doctor's report, it says that you have cancer, ma'am, you have cancer, sir. But you need to know that the report of the Lord, which is our, that's why we have to hear the word of God. Uh, so, so we have to know when, when we're given a, a report from the doctor and it's an evil report, there's good reports from the doctor, but then there's evil reports from the doctor. And, um, so we have to be careful not to ever, um, uh, accept a report. We don't, we, we read the report we acknowledge that the report is here in writing, but we don't accept what that report says. We always have to accept the report of the Lord, okay? So, uh, now we know that, uh, or Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26, um, Jesus was explaining to his disciples, they said, man, if a rich man can't get into heaven, he said, then, then they asked him, who can? And then Jesus just made the point. He said, even though he was talking about rich people getting into heaven because they're connected and in love with their money and don't want to let go of it. But Jesus told them, he said, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. So Jesus wanted them to know that um, Jesus wanted them to know that, um, that nothing was impossible for him. So what am I saying? I'm saying that cancer is not impossible for God to cure. You just have to, uh, you just have to believe. You just have to, that's why it's so important for us to stay immersed in the word. That's, so, that's why it's so important for us to hear about healing divine healing, right, and divine curing by the power of God uh, because, again, if we, we have to learn how to tackle even the more, uh, I don't want to say, um, or the less deadly sicknesses and diseases because the day good could come where you're faced with a deadly disease like cancer. And so we, we, we never want to get a, uh, used to being sick, right? We, we never want to confess out of our mouth. We never want to own sickness. We never want to own disease. 
It doesn't matter whether that sickness or disease has been in your family for years or generations. You and I, we don't want to own it. We never want to own it. Why? Because Jesus broke all those things. He broke that continuous curse, continuous inherited uh, sickness or disease. He broke all that, right? And so we, we never want to receive uh, any evil report. Amen. And so, um, again, cancer comes to steal. He co cancer comes to uh, um, kill and it comes to destroy. Now, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10, I wanted to mention this. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says that Jesus has the name. This is important for us. Jesus, speaking about cancer, um, that um, that Jesus had been has been given because of God's complete um, salvation plan. Let's let's look at uh, Philippians chapter two, and I'm going to read um, verse nine, and it's let me read verse five for to make to make sense. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Verse eight, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him. Therefore, God ha also has highly exalted him and wh him who Jesus and given him the name, the name, the name, which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Now, verse 10 says that at that name, I'm sorry, verse 9, it says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name. It's important for us to realize that the name of Jesus. Now, every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every malfunction, every weakness, right? Every abnormality, did I say that already? All these things, every sickness, everything that could go wrong or has gone wrong or has been diagnosed as far as the human body and sicknesses and diseases are concerned, every one of them has a name, even a name like monkeypox, right? So they've given a name, they've assigned a name to every sickness and every disease. That's how they identify them, right? And so, um, but we need to know that according to the scripture, that God highly exalted Jesus because of all that he did, because he followed through, because he did everything that sin required for Jesus to do, he did it. Everything that required Jesus to uh, fulfill the plan of God, to deliver us, to deliver us and to set us free, to set us free from our sins and to set us free and deliver us from uh, our sickness and diseases. That, but, but God highly exalted him and gave him a name, Jesus. The name of Jesus is above every name, every sickness, Every disease has a name, so the name of Jesus is above all those names, right? Diabetes, uh, uh, liver disease, cirrhosis of the liver, right? Um, arthritis, um, uh, I mentioned uh, psoriasis, skin conditions, eye conditions, ear conditions, head conditions, mind conditions, muscle conditions, order condition, uh, um, I'm sorry, organ conditions, heart conditions, liver conditions, kidney conditions, right? 
uh, mobility conditions, uh, uh, memory conditions. All those things have a name. Alzheimer's has a name. Dementia has a name. But guess what? Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. The name of Jesus is above every single one of those names. Cancer is a name. Now, they have specific kinds of cancers, right? They have breast cancer. There's prostate cancer. There's uh, uh, intestinal cancer, right? And so there's all kinds of cancers. There's pancreatic cancer. There's kidney cancer. There's liver cancer. So all those things, they have a name. But thank you, Jesus. Again, the name of Jesus already since before the foundation of the world, the name of Jesus has been exalted and put up to the top, to the peak, to be over every other name in the world. Everything in the earth, under the earth, in heaven, the name of Jesus has been exalted in all aspects of creation. And so that's important for us to know when we're believing God for healing, okay? Let me read Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. So we need to know. So, uh, so that means whatever you've been diagnosed with, the name of Jesus is designed to break it up and to break it off and to get it off of you. To, to heal you of that name, of that sickness or disease. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, right? Listen, listen to what Luke 10, 19 says. And it says, I know you think I'd have the scriptures already writ written. Luke chapter 10, 19, and it says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and what's to say next? And nothing, nothing, no sickness, no disease, no evil report, no doctor's report, right? No malfunctioning of the body. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Listen, if you're diagnosed with cancer, Jesus has made it and made a way that even cancer can't hurt you but it's by faith it's by trust and believing God to be healed of any sickness or any disease or any part of the curse anything that's bad it's a part of the curse anything that keeps us from prospering from from moving forward from excelling from uh from prospering from living a life of, of health and strength. Uh, Psalm 91 says, uh, God said, with long life will I satisfy you. When cancer comes to cut off your life, God said that with long life I will satisfy him, him who? Him you. And show him my salvation or to manifest my, his salvation. Salvation means healing. It means deliverance. It means to be rescued. It means to be restored. It means to be revived. God said, look, my healing power has been given to you, made available to you. The name of Jesus that's above everything that could attack you, it's been given to you, right? Jesus said here that nothing shall by any means hurt you. Come on, say that. Say, in Jesus' name, cancer will not hurt me cancer will not hurt me I, I the doctor gave me that report but cancer will not hurt me it's the word of god it's the truth it was spoken out of the mouth of jesus he said and nothing no thing no thing no sickness no disease no cancer shall by any means hurt you but guess what that's what you have to say. That's what I have to say when sickness and disease attacks our bodies. 
we have to say that this sickness, this cancer will not harm me, will not harm me in any way. Amen. Yes. And shall, and nothing, it shall not by any means hurt you. Somebody say that's talking to me. Praise God. So it doesn't matter whether there, it's an inherited disease or um, a contracted disease, uh, then we need to believe and know and to say that this will not hurt me. And we're going to believe the report of the Lord, the good news, right? Jesus told, um, uh, remember the, the scripture that says, Jesus said um, that what's impossible with men is possible with God. Amen. So uh, for you and I, we have to uh, uh, be involved in this process. Okay. We're not supposed to fear. All right. We're not supposed to, to fear. Um, and by Jesus stripes, we're healed of every sickness and every disease. That's the final say so. Psalm 118 says that, um, Psalm 118 verse 17, it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Say that, say that I shall not die. I've been diagnosed with cancer. If this, if that's you, I've been diagnosed with cancer, but I shall not die from cancer, but I shall live. Why? I like the fact that it says, and, or in order that you might declare the works of the Lord. What would be the works of the Lord? You know, we ought to already have this written down. If you've been diagnosed with cancer, you should already have it written down that I am going, that I shall live and I shall declare and I shall testify and tell people that God healed me of cancer, that God healed me of cancer. All right. Now, remember, I'm going to pray with you. So I want you to uh, be in agreement with me. So what happens when you're diagnosed? Um, let me, uh, let me read Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. It says, ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. How many of you believe that? That cancer is not too hard for God. God isn't afraid of cancer. Cancer is no match for God and his love and his power. And it's no match for the blood of Jesus, right? Jeremiah 32, 27, it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Where does cancer show up? It shows up in your flesh. It shows up in your breasts. It shows up in your prostate. It shows up in your intestines, right? It shows up in your organs. It shows up on your skin. But Jesus, but, but God says here in Jeremiah 32, 27, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? We got to, we have to come to grips with this when it comes to healing and receiving healing uh, and wholeness from God. We have to believe that there is no sickness too hard for God. It, even if the sickness stumps everybody, stumps the doctors, you know, where they, they turn you away, they say, ma'am, sir, we can't help you. Look, nothing's too, we need to know. We have to know. In those situations, we have to know. If we want to live, we have to know that nothing is too hard for God, Right? And we also have to know that nothing is impossible to him that believeth. So we have to have confidence in our power and ability to believe. To believe what? To believe God's word. That's why we have to stay in the word as far as healing. That's why when, when, um, when we're attacked with signs and symptoms, we got to draw on the word that's already there, that we've already uh, been meditating on, that we, we've already grabbed a hold of, so that that's the first thing that comes out of your mouth. And say, oh, no, no, doctor, I appreciate it. I thank you. I thank you for running the reports. I thank you for helping me identify what I'm dealing with. But, hey, now, 
we're going to, we're going to deal with this on a spiritual level. We're going to deal with what Jesus Christ did for me, which was he himself bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases in his own body. He did it on purpose. He carried them so that I would never have to. Okay. So Jesus became sick. He became unrecognizable. He shed his blood, right? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Psalm 103, it says that, that God healed us, uh, forgives us of all our iniquities. Not just that, but he healed us of all our diseases, known and unknown, right? And so, so uh, praise the Lord. So a uh, doctor's report comes, but we need to know that that's the doctor's report. But God's report says that I'm healed. So if God's report, if the word of God says that by Jesus stripes, I'm healed, that means in my case, cancer is a lie. Or in your case, when anybody who got a diagnosis of cancer, it's a lie. That's a lie now. That's, that's no longer standing. That's no longer standing. Okay. Cancer is a lie, right? The symptoms, the report, the symptoms, with the devils, the devils, uh, um, uh, harassment and, and mess bombarding our mind. That's a lie. But by Jesus stripes, we are healed. So we don't accept the doctor's report. We must believe the report of the Lord. And of course we, uh, when, uh, Jesus told the centurion, when his servants came and said, uh, master, your daughter's dead. Jesus overheard that. And he said, he said, he said, don't listen to what they're saying. Only believe. So if you've been diagnosed with cancer, only believe. Believe what? Believe the report of the Lord. But that man had already confessed. He had already projected. He had already confessed what he was believing to see. And then his servants came to try to take that belief and the results away from him. And Jesus said, only believe. He said, fear not. So uh, if you've gotten any type of report for sickness or disease, fear not, fear not. Say, Lord, Lord, I, 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 I release fear from my mind and I just believe you. Amen. So I'm going to pray with you. Okay. So if you've been given a report about cancer, uh, Psalm 10720, now I can't lay hands on you, which the Bible says for us to do as believers and i believe that but psalm 107 20 says he sent out his word and healed them this is the nlt psalm 107 20 he sent out his word and healed them snatching them from the door of death listen to that does that sound like god or what the report's trying to tell you you're going to die but jesus uh, the word says in 107 20 he sent out his word, which I'm going to send out the word and heal them, snatching them from the door of death. Amen. So as I pray for you, as I pray for you, I want you to receive the word as I'm praying for you. And I want you to believe that you receive your healing and to believe that you have been snatched from the door of death. Okay, again, um, so Proverbs 18, 21. And so after I pray with you, you have to continue to confess the word, continue to thank God for his good report. Proverbs 18, 21 says that life and death are in the power of the tongue and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof or eat the fruit resulting from your words. So you, you have to continue to speak life over your body to keep thanking God that I'm, Lord, I thank you. I'm healed by Jesus stripes. I'm healed. I'm, I'm already healed. My healing from cancer was already taken care of before I even got cancer, before I even, uh, the report even said I had cancer or any other sickness for that matter. So it, if you have any sickness or disease, uh, right now, you're listening to me. Maybe it's not cancer. Maybe something else. Uh, any any other thing? Um, then you just just uh, listen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I send out your word to those who are listening tonight in the name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name, I bind the spirit of death right now that is behind the spirit of cancer. The spirit of death, I command you to loose that person in the name of Jesus. Death, you are rebuked. Death, an evil report, we renounce you. We denounce you. We reject you in the name of Jesus. Spirit of death, you come out of that person right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke those listening to me. You listen. I rebuke the spirit of cancer in the name of Jesus. They shall live. They shall live. Those listening to me, they shall live and not die. Come on, y'all. Receive this by faith. They shall live and not die. I command, I, I, I curse the spirit of cancer right now in the name of Jesus. I loose that person from the cancer's assignment to kill them, to destroy them, to steal from them, rob them. I, uh, I, I call you loosed from cancer's assignment to destroy you. I, uh, in Jesus' name, I command every cancer cell in these bodies, in your body, I command every cancer cell to die from the root right now in the name of Jesus. I curse you. I empower you to fail. In Jesus' name, I curse every cancerous tumor attached itself to organs, to skin, to any to anything to the brain right now i curse every cancerous tumor right now in the name of jesus and because of the name of jesus and nothing by any means this cancer shall not hurt these people in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i curse every mature cell a cancer cell right now in your bodies in the name of Jesus. I curse every microscopic cancer cell that's hiding out that can't be detected on x-rays or MRIs or CAT scans. I curse every microscopic cancer cell in the name of Jesus. I curse you at your roots. I command you to die in the name of Jesus. And I command that these bodies that every wherever there was a cancer cell that it be replaced with healthy healthy cells in the name of Jesus spirit of cancer you are rebuked spirit of death you leave right now in the name of Jesus leave leave stop your hovering in the name of Jesus you leave and you, uh, uh, I command everyone under the sound of my voice, I call you loosed from every sickness, loosed from every disease, every name that is named, every sickness, every disease that has a name. I speak and declare the name of Jesus over your bodies, over your organs, over your brain. Right now, the name of Jesus from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Come on, somebody. Receive the report of the Lord. Receive the report of the Lord. I send out an anointing to everyone under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. I call, I command the spirit of death and cancer. I command the yoke to be destroyed and that burden to be removed by the anointing in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And I, I, I declare and decree as we touch and agree together that cancer is gone from my body. I'm healed of cancer. I've been cured of cancer. I've got long life ahead of me. Long life, long life. Father, we thank you that, that you've given us long life and you've shown us your salvation in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that we're healed. 
We thank you that we're whole. We thank you that we're cancer free. We're th we thank you that we're free of the spirit of death that had come to attack us. We thank you, thank you, thank you for rescuing us. We thank you, Lord, from snatching those from the door of death in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, Father, I believe I receive. I believe I receive my healing. I believe your report, Lord, that says, by Jesus' stripes, I've been healed of everything. I've been healed of every sickness, every disease. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you keep, you keep thanking God for your healing. You keep thanking God that his report of healing and wholeness is, is full force in your life. In the name of Jesus. To, don't accept. Don't accept the doctor's report. Don't accept it. Don't make it yours. Don't possess it. Don't talk, don't talk about it being yours. Don't give it any glory. Don't give it any attention. You give the word of God a, attention. You give God's healing power, miracle working power, his dunamis. You give that attention. You continue to say that cancer, cancer, cannot harm me and I shall live and give my testimony and declare the works of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Keep, just keep meditating. Keep, keep uh, basking in this, in, in this prayer and what we've talked about. Just use your imagination. Just continue to thank God for your healing. Don't fear. Don't let fear uh, take a hold of you and and grip you and keep and hold you hostage. You just keep confessing the word of God. God is faithful. He's faithful. And he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He's never changed his mind. He's never changed his mind. He's never said that I'm not the Lord that heals you anymore. He's never changed it. He is our Jehovah Rophe. He's our healer. And he is, and he loves us. He loves you. So be blessed. God bless you. Stay in the word of God. Believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Love you. Bye.